Hello and welcome to Petro Media and today we're going to start the maintenance process on the MPC 5000. This is going to entail me taking it apart completely, removing some of the things that are broken in preparation for replacement of those parts. My order from MPC stuff is already on its way, it should be here in a couple of days, but I figured it'd be wise to just go ahead and do all the cleaning and maintenance now. Like I stated before, I didn't want to take it apart a bunch of times and I can give you the quick list of things that are going to be replaced that are coming out of the machine right now. And if you're enjoying the content, feel free to also check out my website, petrolmediainc.com. I have a ton of sound packs and drum machines loaded and ready for you guys on the site. Please feel free to check it out. If there's anything you like, I would love the support via purchasing any of those kits. All of them are solid. My drums always hit hard, no matter what. It's one of the signatures of the sound that I was doing back in the day and still to this day, just the way I produce. I like my music to just hit hard. You got to feel the impact of, of it. But anyway, let's get to the video. I'm going to turn it around so you guys can actually look at the machine directly so you can see what's going on and what's going to be replaced on the machine. And then we're going to break it down and check out the insides of it and make sure everything's working. I have had a problem with the machine. The only thing that I've had that's a actual error that wasn't like user error from what I could understand so far is the USB port and it doesn't it connects to the machine when you connect it to a computer so the computer gives the signal in a sense like I'm here and the the MPC is like oh I see the computer but then the MPC doesn't open the folder for the computer to access it or either or the computer doesn't for some reason recognize the device it doesn't respond like i don't hear the computer make the noise on my pc saying oh hey there's a usb device let me go check out what it is and my mac doesn't even open the folder it's like what is this so um i'm thinking that there's one of two things going on either a the port's broken or b the software needs to be reinstalled and i have a copy of 2.0 and i'll do the reinstalled software after we're done with everything it'll probably resolve some of the issues. I'm also thinking some of the trigger issues I'm having with the pads might somehow be involved with causing some issues. What I mean by that is when a circuit isn't working correctly, sometimes it causes issues to cascade through machines in different ways and you never know how it's gonna respond. So I'm able to make music on it as long as I'm not using pads one or two. It has spread to pad two. <laughs> um, originally, the problem was only on pad one. And for some reason now, pad two is doing the same thing. It doesn't want to work exactly. Like I could press it sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm replacing the pad sheet and hopefully that resolves that matter. But let me turn it around so you can take a look at the machine. So this is my MPC 5000. And on this machine, again, like I stated, pretty much everything works perfectly fine with the exception of these two pads. And I'm going to replace the pads to see what's going on, see if that resolves the issue. Hopefully that does resolve it. The other main issue is back here, back here the USB port doesn't work correctly. Um, again, can plug it into the computer, but it doesn't recognize for whatever reason. Now cosmetically, the machine is perfect, meaning it works fine considering how old it is. You know, the, whoever was the previous owner took moderate care of it. All the, all the wear and tear scenarios are typical things you know that some of the buttons i feel a little little sticky underneath not on the top because i cleaned it down surface wise with uh you know you know just mild cleansers just to make sure there's no like germs on it but underneath the buttons you can see there's some dirt so i'm going to take the machine apart today and we're going to get all the buttons out and the knobs and we're going to wash those thoroughly and i found another way to whiten these buttons I'm gonna give it a try. If it does damage the buttons, then I'll just order some new buttons from the NPC stuff. But for now, I wanna see if I can get some of this yellowing to go away. One of the other things that I found was an issue was the overdub button was not working for a while. But after a couple of weeks of just playing around and making beats on it, all of a sudden now it's working. And it's working consistently. So I'm thinking the buttons are just dirty. And these buttons are different from the regular tack switches. They're, they are tack switches, but they're bigger. So I have a button cleaner. That's another reason why I'm going to clean it today and then let's let it sit for a couple of days before I put it back together. Plus the order has to come in and it hasn't come in yet. I'm also replacing the pads. I don't like the fat pads. 
Um, I don't know what it is. Um, they're just too firm. Like, I do like when there's a little bit of give in the pads. And the, the 2000 XL had the perfect pads. This machine actually uses the same pads as the 2000, 2000 XL. So it makes sense for me to go ahead and get those pads instead. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace the pads and put back the original pads and that's on order. Replace the pad sheet. Um, I have the compact flash door tray piece to put on. So I have that as well. And for the most part, everything else has been taken care of. NPC stuff hit, hooked me up with a, a red knob. I was missing this for a while and I was able to get it from them. It's a 3D printed version of the old model. And I kind of like it. They did a really clean job with the print. So yeah, we're gonna get into it and let's open this machine up. So to get started on this, what I'm gonna do is turn the machine off. I'm gonna unplug it. And just to make sure that everything is fully drained power-wise from this machine, I'm gonna turn it on and leave it like this for just a moment. This will force whatever residual electricity that's being held in any capacitors to try to do what they're supposed to do and it will just drain out of the system. It's a good practice with any electronics to do that just because what you're trying to avoid happening is accidentally touching something and shorting it out just by accident. So this way, any residual electricity in the system will just be drained out of the system. It doesn't take long and you just turn it completely off. So now the machine's off. I'm not gonna unplug it because I'm not gonna move it. I'm just gonna unscrew everything from it. This should be a relatively easy process. I'm already not happy. <laughs> oh, that's gross. So this machine is going to need some serious cleaning because that's a dead cockroach. Now I'm afraid to open this thing all the way up. But we're going to have to. Ugh. The upside is there's very little chance that there's anything alive in the machine because if it was, I would have already seen it and my house is clean and I don't have that issue. So clearly, wherever this was used last, <sighs> the person wasn't as clean as I thought. So it's probably good that I did disinfect this <laughs> and it's probably good that I'm gonna clean it even more. So let's get back to taking this thing apart. We have hit a snag. Apparently, I might actually have to unplug this thing because it appears it appears that the top panel is attached via some of the screws on the bottom panel. And that's kind of frustrating <laughs> to deal with, but you know, we gotta get it done. So I always recommend if you're gonna be repairing something, take pictures of everything. That way you know where everything goes when you put it back. And I took pictures of all the buttons and where they go, but I didn't take pictures of the wiring in the back. I don't have my, my wires labeled. Um, it's already color coordinated, so there's no reason, real reason for me to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a quick picture of the wires so I know, and then let's get this thing completely unhooked. <laughs> all right, before I flip it back over, we're gonna take a quick look inside, and for the most part, everything is pretty clean. I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of dusting, and yeah, I've already seen like other things that are some gross insects. <laughs> but overall, everything else is fine. Um, the USB port looks like it's okay. Um, I just need to thoroughly vacuum out the inside of this, and I'll do that a little bit later on. Um, I just need to get the top panel off. And it's being extremely stubborn at this point. You know, there's nothing holding it on. There's no clips. I've unscrewed everything. And 
There might be some screws internally that are holding it. And I think I just found a couple, so maybe that's why it's not releasing. I need to take a look at the back and just check to be sure. Don't see too many other screws. I think it's these. Oh, yeah. Let's pull these screws and then we will see what happens. So I'm just gonna move this because the hard drive is actually attached to the, the bottom panel. And I'm not cleaning the bottom panel, I'm just gonna vacuum out the inside of the machine. But we'll see if this works once I do this. So that seems to be what was, what was holding on the plastic, because now it's, it's moving. One side is finally loose. Man, they put a lot of screws into keeping this thing together. <laughs> and the interesting thing is I'm seeing a couple of screws that are, that are underneath, which I think keep this part completely attached. Um, let's get the vacuum. What happens when you have five kids? Okay, like I said, the machine itself wasn't really that bad. It's not really that dirty on the inside but I am still fighting with getting this thing apart. And it's really unnecessarily, it's really interesting how many screws they put in to hold this top panel on. I need to figure out why this panel won't come off. So give me a moment. Let me see what's going on because the plastic now wants to come off on one side, but not on the other side. And I am really hoping I don't have to take this out to get to a screw. I'm also going to take a quick look underneath and see if I need to take this off to get to some other screw, which it doesn't seem like it. Oh yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I have to take this out. There it is. There you are. You're the reason. <laughs> You're the reason I can't get this thing off. <laughs> All right. Ah. Ah! All right, so now that that's off, let's flip this thing over and I'm just gonna rest it. And interestingly, this was an MPC stuff drive with that funky port that nobody uses anymore. But thank you MPC stuff for upgrading whoever bought this from you. Does this one burn? That's a question I was actually wondering myself because I know I can read. Oh, rewritable. So this writes CDs. Not that I'm going to be doing that anytime soon, but there's an option. And there's even more crap on the front. Jesus. It is such a stark contrast to how clean the 1000 is on the inside when I took a look in there compared to the 5000. Whomever had this before me, uh, did you live in an insect den? Because, <laughs> man, like, mm. And I'm glad everything was dead before it got to me because I would be really pissed if this opened up and some crap came out. You feel me? But this is why it's a good idea when you get a used device. You know, there's no harm in opening it up because, you know, it's, it's out of warranty anyway. Um, take a look inside, clean it up, make sure it's clean. The 1000, I ended up installing the, the kit from soundmod.io and that required me to open the unit and remove the power supply and place the battery inside of it. So that's, in that process, I ended up checking to see if everything was okay and it was perfectly fine. It was a little dusty, but overall, still a fairly clean machine. This one is, a good machine, but it's dirty inside. And you see it's still being held on somewhere. So now I gotta go back underneath and take another look. Because the last thing you wanna do is snap something trying to open it. Yeah, let's go back under. But I wonder, I wonder if I'm overthinking this. I'm wondering if it's literally just this screw that's causing all the goddamn problems. Is there another one like this? I don't see another one like this. I'll be so mad at myself if that's really the issue. 
But you know what? Let's let's take her out. That ain't it. <laughs> Two screws behind the screen. We're gonna cut a lot of this out. <laughs> All right. So just looking at the back of this, it's gross. <laughs> They clearly spilled some things and there's some oxidization. I can get around that. I'm going to try to do some cleaning just to see if I can just rub some things off, but I could see rust marks here, there, and a few other places. I can live with that because I have some ideas about how I can get around that. One of the tricks you can do, which is probably what I'm going to do because uh, I have a lot of young ladies in my house. <laughs> I have uh, access to nail polish. So I'm gonna clean everything first and then I'm going to put a thin layer of nail polish, clear nail polish on the back where the rust spots are. And that should seal it back up so that you know the coating is there. Because I could see the coating that was originally on there. If I'm not gonna do that, I, I could use, because for my drone stuff, I have a, a clear coat material that waterproofs things, but it looks like it would probably be a little bit thicker than I need, so I might try nail polish. I don't know. I might just go ahead and go with that now that I think about that, because I have that here in the garage and I won't be using up everybody's nail polish on the back of the machine panel. But I'm gonna clean this up because it's pretty gross. Um, and then the pads, woo! There's a lot of human all over the pads. <laughs> a lot of human on the pads and a lot of human all over the... So, the joke behind that, just so you know, um, if you are any in any way, shape, or form into science, you and you want to learn, you start to learn some things about uh, the natural world. You realize that a lot of the dust around you, in your immediate vicinity, was made by you and the people that you're around. So there's a lot of previous owner material all over this that has to go. And this was a fat pad from NPC stuff. And it looks like, did they install it right? Because it doesn't look like they did. I don't know. Yeah, I guess they did. He put it on right, okay. So it goes on that way. You know what, just again, just to be sure, because when a new one comes, you wanna make sure you have it right, always take pictures. So these pads, they've seen better days. They are horrifically dirty and uh, gross. They're gonna have to go. Well, you know what? I'll clean them up and I'll keep them as backups. That's what I'll do. But I gotta get all these buttons out without breaking them. knob that wants to be difficult and I'm trying my best I don't want to break the knob because that's the volume knob and I could just use the main outs if I did that and then just replace this but then I have to buy the whole board I don't want to do all that so I'm trying to get this off in as nice and as calmly of a method as possible but it's being an ass so I'm gonna have to check this afterwards because it's really loose it should be fine, but I will still make sure it's okay. Now the felt pieces, I'm going to clean. So I'm gonna take all of these up and I'm gonna wash them and then just set them out to dry for several days until they're fully dry. The machine itself, it's pretty gross. <laughs> that seems to be the, the going theme right now is, oh, it's gross, it's gross, it's gross. Um, it's a lot of human in here. I, I just can't express that enough, how much human is in here. So that's one thing. I also need to get the pad sheet up. So the pad sheet is glued on and it's using one of these funky clips, which I believe, yep, there we go. 
that was actually a lot less stressful than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna get this off now because the new one's on its way anyway. And I think, yeah, there's even a bubble underneath one of the pads too. Let's just get this all the way up. The new pad comes, I need to get this glue off, so it's a good thing I'm doing all of this now in preparation for that. Yeah, there's a thin sheet of stuff. I think I have some glue be gone. If not, I have a couple of things that we can use, but this pad sheet has seen better days. A lot of human on this too. <laughs> it is gross. I'm a, let, me zoom, let me zoom you guys. So yeah, it's this is why you go in and really thoroughly check your machine and you just make sure everything gross can be removed. All right, so I have some BW100 contact cleaner. This stuff is great for buttons. Um, I used it on the Phantom X when I first got it. I opened it up and you guys saw the video of the bottom end of it. And I haven't done the top end of the Phantom X yet, but it's probably gonna be just like this. But this stuff will actually penetrate into the buttons and clean underneath the contacts. The way I look at it is, you know, if I clean it now, then I don't have to do this when the parts come. So I'm just doing all the prep work today. Just a little bit, a little bit on everything. And then. See, that button is, that button is, is just stuck. I don't use that button. What button is that? <laughs> oh, that's the skip to the end of the, of the, uh, the bar, the bar, like the whole, that's the skip to the end of the sequence. I never use that button. So this doesn't really bother me, but that button is really in a bad way. And this stuff dries really fast, just in general. So it's good to like hit the buttons quickly after you spray it. It's it's really, really bad in here. And I'm just gonna try to just go around the button. I see why the on the uh I see why the overdub button was so sticky. They literally spilled something on top of this button. Um, I'm gonna see if I can clean it off without doing any damage. Yeah, it's just real cruddy. Whatever it was left a whole lot of crap. I, I suspect and hear me out because I'm not trying to label anybody, but I suspect the person used this machine and ate around it. And, ah, oh, there we go, that button's starting to work again. And sometimes they might've spilled food on it and they just wiped the surface of the machine. Not thinking about the fact that things have pores and openings in these things, so stuff falls in. It doesn't just stay on the surface, it falls in too. So this type of cleaning is necessary for these older devices. And honestly, it's, it's good for any machine in general. Like if you have something and it's already out of warranty anyway, it's gonna cost you to do this. If you are handy and you can trust yourself to not damage your devices and you just take some time with it, 
because I have a little bit of time today, there's no harm in doing this, you know? That way, you know for sure that everything is clean, everything is working, and it's behaving as it should. And you just go slow because you don't want to rip something off by accident. You know, I'm using a microfiber cloth and they can be a little clingy with these little buttons that have like little sharp edges. There's just so much, so much dirt <laughs> on top of this thing. Wow. This should be obvious information. Don't eat food on top of your devices. Like, don't do that. This should be like clearly obvious information. But whoever was here before just didn't do that. Like, found insect carcasses inside. <laughs> and don't worry about the desk. I'm not that worried about this desk. Um, it's temporary because we are going to be switching out the the way we do things uh, soon. Can't reveal all of that just yet. There's just so much, like, so much crap. Yeah, there's rust marks on the inside too. Now, I don't remember if this stuff actually helps to remove this, but I'm gonna try just a little bit of it on there. If not, I'm gonna have to just pick up some, some Gooby Gone. And don't get this on the screen, whatever you do, because this, this is the type of material that will eat at things. So you don't want it to damage the plastic by accident. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out another way to get this, this stuff off. It's because I gotta get it up before I put the other thing down. So yeah, I'll probably end up using some Gooby Gone. But I think that's it for this video. This machine's gonna sit here and with my makeshift stand that uh makeshift stand that holds it up. It's gonna sit here in this condition for now. So the stuff from NPC stuff comes in so I can put it back together. Uh, one of the things that I'm not a fan of with the 5000, uh, as I'm, especially since now I have it open, is the size of the fan. Now, the fan is interesting because the orientation to me doesn't make sense. This device tends to sit flat. As you can see, well, you probably can't see from a second. Let me clean this up real quick and then I'll bring, bring you over to the fan. So before I make a final decision on this, uh, I'm gonna have to wait till, uh, the, I'm gonna wait till the parts come in so I can actually start working on the build because what I think is the problem with this unit and why it overheated so much is the fan's orientation. Two things, two things. One, the fan's too small. This is, a, this is far too small of a unit for how much heat can be generated in here. Obviously, almost all of the heat is going to be over here being created by the the power supply, which lives in this general area. But what it looks like from the way the blades are curved, because they're curved on, on the top, they're curved like this, like look, my hand are curved like that, which means that when this is spinning, it's sucking the air in and blowing it down onto the thing. That's a great idea because you need to have airflow. The problem is, this is the wrong direction for airflow. Mainly because, which way does hot air like to go? It doesn't go down, it rises. So, I, I think that not only does the tiny motor burn out for the fan after a while trying to keep up with all of this, and it's not generating enough air, but also the airflow is just all being sucked down and into the unit rather than being blown out of the unit. And for me to combat this, what I've done is I have a much bigger AC fan over here that basically lives at an angle and blows cool air underneath the machine. But again, until I opened it, I didn't notice that the orientation is wrong. And a lot of, of uh, the forums talk about this and say that the best way to fix this is to flip it the other way, flip it upside down and have it, have it sucking the air out. So 
that way, if especially with the way I have mine configured, I'm probably gonna end up doing this on this anyway, because I have mine set up where it's raised anyway. So all this cool air is going underneath the unit anyway, and there are vents underneath the machine. So it, this would actually allow it to suck the hot air out of the machine. And I'm gonna debate that. You guys can feel free to comment on that because I haven't decided if I'm gonna do it yet. But either way, I do have a, temp I have a temporary solution at the moment with the fan over here that's keeping this from having any issues. But I think this is where we're gonna stop. This is as clean as I'm gonna get it. The biggest thing is gonna be getting the stickiness off of this pad sheet. Maybe NPC stuff will send it with some stuff to remove it. I didn't see that in the description. If not, I'll go pick up some Gooby Gone and go ahead and place it on here and remove it. So she's gonna live like this for just a little while. All of these buttons need to be cleaned. And just they're just, it doesn't look like I can improve the color. I was gonna try some bleaching stuff. I can improve it a little bit, just a little bit. I make it a little bit wider. But the issue right now is that most of them just have nastiness on it because again, the previous owner just ate food on top of his NPC. I don't know, why would you do that? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I'm on my way to do some other things today, and this is where we're going to stop with this for now. So if you like what we've been talking about, like, share, and subscribe, and I will finish this in another video. Let's do the part two of this, reassembling it once the stuff has come. But right now, the machine is ready for all of the things that are going to come next for it. So catch me next time.